Wednesday, 18 September, and this is Top Stories by Western News. India on Monday urged Pakistan to create a conducive environment for restarting dialogue. The Indian response came from the Minister of State for External Affairs, V.K. Singh, days after Pakistan's new foreign minister spoke about holding talks with India. Mr. Singh's statement comes days before India and Pakistani foreign ministers are expected to interact during the UN General Assembly session, which will begin this week. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had made clear India's expectations from Islamabad when he had urged in a letter to Prime Minister Imran Khan that he should help foster a terrorism-free South Asia. Mr. Singh, however, indicated that Indian decision-makers are yet to be convinced of the new Pakistani government's ability to decide on India-related issues without the support of the powerful military establishment. He, Mr. Khan, was propped up by the army. Let's wait and watch. The question remains whether he will remain under army control or not, Mr. Singh told media persons. Pakistan's new government has maintained from the beginning that it wishes to hold talks with India. The Madras High Court on Monday initiated sua motu criminal contempt of court proceedings against BJP National Secretary H. Raja for his recent scandalous conduct of having reportedly used derogatory words against the High Court. A division bench of Justices C.T. Selvam and M. Nirval Kumar invoke the power conferred on the High Court under Article 215 of the Constitution to punish for contempt of itself and ordered issue of statutory notice to the contemner requiring his personal appearance before the court on October 22nd. The bench took note of a video clip of Mr. Raja shot during Vinayaka Chaturthi celebrations within the Tirumayam police station limits in Purukote district on Saturday. In the footage, Mr. Raja could be seen picking up a quarrel with the police for citing High Court orders to deny permission for the erection of a dive in a public place. The Centre on Monday proposed the amalgamation of state-owned Bank of Baroda, Dena Bank and Vijaya Bank to create India's third largest bank as part of reforms in the public sector banking segment. The decision was taken at the meeting of a ministerial panel headed by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, which oversees merger proposals of state-owned banks. The other members of the panel include Railways Minister Piyush Goyal and Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. This major decision was taken by Alternative Mechanism today to amalgamate Bank of Baroda, Dena Bank and Vijaya Bank. While making this suggestion, we have borne in mind that we don't want a merger of what are relatively weak banks, Mr. Jaitley said, adding, you can have two well-performing banks absorbing a weak one in the amalgamation process and hopefully creating a mega bank which will be sustainable, whose lending ability will be far higher. This follows the merger of five associate banks of State Bank of India with itself. The government has also moved to offload its majority stake in IDBI Bank to the Life Insurance Corporation of India. Police Commissioner A.K. Viswanathan yesterday reiterated that the installation of closed-circuit television cameras or CCTV will ensure safety for all. Releasing a compact disc of a short film, Third Eye, starring actor Vikram, on the importance of installing CCTVs, he appealed to people to install them in houses and establishments as the September deadline nears. Bringing the entire city under CCTV surveillance is an obligation. Moreover, the installation of such gadgets is essential since it's useful to detect and deter criminals. At times, it's easier for us to find out the truth in case of any fake complaints, said Mr. Vishwanathan. Mr. Vikram said, in Singapore, any woman can work freely without fear even after midnight. By installing CCTVs, Chennai can also be made a safe place. Chennai Corporation officials are in a scramble to identify encroachments in water bodies as the central government has sent a strong message directing the state government authorities 
to revive and rehabilitate water bodies in major cities, including Chennai. A meeting will be conducted by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs on Tuesday in Delhi to discuss rehabilitation of water bodies in cities such as Chennai. Removal of encroachments is crucial for rehabilitation of all water bodies in the city. As a result, civic body officials are concerned about giving misleading data on encroachments in water bodies. According to sources, many water bodies in arid areas have been encroached upon in the last few years and land records have not been handed over to the Chennai Corporation by the erstwhile local bodies after the merger in 2010. We have been able to remove just 39 out of the 55 settlements along the Kuam River. At least 13 slums have not yet been demolished for Kuam eco-restoration, said an official. We round up this news cast with fuel prices from Kuam Metros. In Chennai, petrol is sold for 85.31 rupees per litre and diesel for 78 rupees per litre. In Delhi, petrol is sold for 82.06 rupees per litre and diesel for 73.78 rupees per litre. In Mumbai, petrol is sold for 89.44 rupees per litre and diesel for 78.33 rupees per litre. In Kolkata, petrol is sold for 83.91 rupees per litre and diesel for 75.63 rupees per litre.